Welcome, welcome, dear players! Would you like to write your own story of the war between Rome and Carthage, just like Hannibal, the famous commander of the Asian world? Or perhaps you will retreat the triumph of the Roman Republic, as history tells us. You can take advantage of this opportunity with our rival by playing Phalanx's new board game Hands of the Sea, whose campaign just launched on GameFound. In Hands in the Sea, one player takes on the role of a Romance, while the other represents Carthage. The game board represents four regions of the ancient world. Both players place their town and city markers, along with their fleet tokens, on the board. Players will receive their respective empire cards and a deck of location cards. Beside the map, place the strategy cards, revealing three of them, as well as the event deck and neutral empire and location cards. Before I explain the gameplay, listen carefully to how you can defeat your opponent in the board of this war game. So, automatic victory is achieved by a player who wins a land battle or a cube the opponent's capital. A player will also immediately win if they surpass their opponent by 25 victory points. The game will instantly end in favor of player who gains control over every location in Sicily. The game ends when one player plays all their town or city markers on the map. It also ends if a player captures the opponent's city markers with a total value of 10 points. Another condition to ending the game is when a player reaches 8 prestige points, as indicated on the player board, or accumulates 90 victory points. The game also concludes in a peace card is drawn from the event deck or after 12 runs, which is tracked on the rand marker on the main board. Each player during their turn can perform two main actions and any number of free actions. So players draw up to five cards into their hand. The player controlling Rome always takes the first turn. In the first round, however, each player may only perform one action per turn. By playing a location card, you can settle a town or city connected to that location. If the city is connected by a land road, you must discard an additional location card with a horse symbol to pay the transport cost. After that, place the played cards in the discard pile on your player board. Then take one of your town markers and place it on the newly settled location to mark your control there. Don't forget to draw the associate card for that location from the location card deck and place it on top of your discard pile. If the location is connected by a sea road, play the location card and discard the card with a ship symbol to pay the transport cost. If the new location is marked with a double circle, you must also discard a card with a head symbol to pay the additional cost. And after that, place the discarded cards in your pile and take a town markers and place it on the map in the settled location. Players can upgrade a town to a city in location marked with a double circle. To develop, play a matching symbol card from your hand and discard a card with a head symbol to pay the cost. Remove the town marker from the map and place it back in your supply and replacing it with your city marker. Benefits of cities? Gain one silver coin every time the Carthaginians uh, player resolves a campaign card. Earn one victory point at the end of the game. The player controlling Carthage has a campaign card at the bottom of their deck. When this card is drawn, resolve the following. Draw an event card from the event deck and apply its effect. Each event card has conditions at the top indicating which player is effects based on dice roll. For example, if the Carthaginians player, blue, rolls 1, 2, 3 or 4, they resolve the event. The Roman players resolve it on a roll of 5 or 6. Next, discard the last strategy card Move the remaining two cards to the right and draw a new strategy card for the first slow with highest cost. Now each player gains one silver coin for every city they control. 
And finally, the card genome player will shuffle the discard pile into a new draw deck and place the campaign card at the bottom. Players can buy Empire cards from their own deck's display. So pay the cost in silver, the cost is shown in the top left corner of the card. After that, add the purchased card to the top of your drone pile, expanding your deck with new actions. Each player's Empire's deck contains a Fortifications card. To fortify a location, you have to buy the Fortification card and add it to your deck. Next, play the Fortification card along with a matching location card for the town or city you want to fortify. And finally, you pay 6 silver coin to place a fortification marker on the location. Remember that each town or city can have only one fortification. If all fortification markers are used, this action cannot be performed. Fortification at two defense points during an attack on the fortified location. I mentioned attacking Ariel and I will now discuss another player action, attacking a location. So to attack, play a location card linked to the city you want to target. The type of connection matters when paying transport costs. In my example, the locations are connected by sea, so you must discard a card with a ship symbol. Place the location cards in the discard pile on your player board. Near to the location you are attacking, place a battle round token and set it to the first round. Lance battles can last up to four rounds. If you are besieging a fortified city or town, the siege can last up to six rounds, so flip the token to indicate this. But now let's return to land battles. Use a strength token to indicate the defense level of attacker city. Every city has a base defense strength of 1. If the city has fortifications, move the strength token to additional spaces toward the defender's area. Some cities, like Rome, feather a sword icon that add an extra defense point to this location. So when attacking a location, you must pay one or more Empire cards with at least one sword symbol. Place this card on the designated spaces on the board. For each sword symbol, move the Strength token toward your side on the battle track. Players can increase their attacks and defense strength during a land battle by playing Empire cards with sword symbols and moving the Strength token on the battle track accordingly. A bonus strength point is awarded to a player who plays three cards with different unit types. After playing cards with strength symbols, advance the battle round token. At the start of a new round, if the strength token is on neutral space, so 0 or 1, there is no winner and another battle round proceeds in the same way. If the strength token is in the attacker's area, the battle ends with their victory. In this case, the attacker removes the defender's town marker and plays it as a, some kind of trophy on their player board. It will count for victory points at the end of the game. If the attacker location is marked with a single circle, the winner immediately plays their town marker there. If it has a double circle, the winner must play a card with a head symbol from their hand to place their town marker and establish control for this location. After winning a land battle, the victor gains one prestige point marked on their player board. Instead of attacking a location, you can perform a cavalry ride on an enemy location to seize the opponent's town marker. To do this, play at least one Empire card with a red flame symbol. Each flame symbol pays for the connection to the next location. For example, playing two symbols allow you to write a location up to two spaces away from a town or city under your control. Notably, this action doesn't require playing a location card or transport symbols. But remember that your opponent can block your ride by playing an Empire card with a grey flame symbol. Cavalry ride cannot target or pass through fortified location or those involved in ongoing battles. 
Riding a neutral town like Syracuse in Sicily isn't allowed until it's climbed. Keep in mind that each capture enemy town or city marker counts as your victory point. To conduct naval battles, you need a fleet. Let's start with its creation and expansion. Another possible action during your turn is building ship for your navy. To do this, play a card with a head symbol and pay 3 silver coins. This increase your fleet level by 1, which you mark on your player board. Before discussing naval battles, let's review how you can move your ships. By playing a card with a ship symbol, you can move your fleet token to an adjacent sea zone. If your fleet is sunk and you lost all ships, place your fleet token back in your home port where it starts the game. If enemy fleet tokens occupy the same sea zone, one player may initiate a navy attack. This action requires playing a location card with a ship symbol. The attacker rolls a number of dice equal to their fleet level. Every roll of 5 or 6 results in a hit, sinking one enemy ship. The defender, in the same time, does the same. For example, Rome rolls 2 dice and scores 1 6, while Carthage rolls 3 dice and scores 2 6. So Carthage sinks 2 Roman ships and Rome sinks 1 Carthaginian ship. After the battle, any defeated fleet returns to its home port. If your fleet is in a sea zone adjacent to an enemy coastland city, you can play a card with a ship symbol to pillage that location. Ensure no enemy fleets occupy the same sea zone. Ensure no enemy fleets occupy the same sea area. And if your opponent doesn't block this action, by playing a fortification card, for example, you steal as many coins from their supply as half of your fleet level, rounded down. After a successful ride, move your marker on the corresponding track on the board. While discussing battles, note that you can add a leader card to a battle, on land or at sea, as a free action. The game features four unit types on Empire cards. Cavalry, Heavy Infantry, Light Infantry, Leader, Helmet Symbol. Playing a Leader card in a Navy battle allows players to roll additional dice, increasing their attack strength. So roll one die for each sword symbol on the card. A hit is achieved with a roll of 6, 5 or 4. In this game you can also purchase strategy cards. The cost of each card is shown in the top right corner. At an additional cost if you are buying a card from first or second positions. Some strategy cards are faction specific, such as one exclusive for Rome, so Carthage cannot purchase it. These unique cards are placed on your player board and do not either your deck. Once purchased this card, the effects become active. If you already have an active strategy card but want to purchase a new one, you must first discard the old card, which required an action. Then you can buy and activate a new strategy card. One way to amass wealth is through the trade action. Perform this action by playing a location card with a ship symbol and discarding selected cards with silver values. For example, in my case, I play 4 cards with 3 and uh, 4, so my total value is 7 and I take 7 coins from the general supply. Playing an Empire card with a Merchant icon also earns coins. Each Jack icon equals 2 silver coins. Discarding additional location cards with Jack symbols increases your earnings. For example, a player can gain a total of 6 coins this way. Let's stay on the topic of money. Coins can also be used for bribery, I mean another player action. By playing a card with a red dot symbol and playing one coin, you can bribe your opponent. Your opponent may block this action by playing a card with a grey dot symbol. If your bribe is successful, your opponent must discard one of the unit cards 
with a dot symbol in the upper left corner from their hand or reserve. And this card is returned to the Empire card deck. You can put the card from your hand in reserve to use it later. You may hold up to five reserved cards. This option gives you some kind of flexibility to collect sets of cards instead of playing and discarding them immediately. As a free action, you can retrieve cards from your reserve back into your hand. Note that you must retrieve all reserved cards and pay one silver coin for each card retrieved. And guys, these are the key elements you need to understand the possibilities in Hands in the Sea. Are you ready to immerse yourself in these ancient times and rewrite the history of Rome and Carthage? The choice, as always, is yours, but I hope I've made it easier for you. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like it. For those of you interested in this board game, there's a link on the game campaign of this board game in the description below. That's all for today. See you in next video. Bye!